If you're sailing the USS Alaska and need a break from battle, in the center of the ship you can find a basketball court. The Sea Harrier has an animated windscreen wiper, although you can't seem to see it from the cockpit. Successfully dodging hostile anti-aircraft fire and landing on the enemy runway results in you being taken prisoner. There's a unique game over text message. And for some reason on the city map, you're allowed to become a permanent resident of the enemy airfield because the mechanic seems to be bugged. Hidden in the camouflage pattern of the car lead, you can find a silhouetted outline of the country Jordan. The Chi Ri 2 has been chosen to represent the thermal and night vision optics modification, despite the vehicle itself lacking both. If you set your game language to French, the Object 248 is suddenly referred to as an IS-5. If you decide you want to roleplay as an observation aircraft, it's possible to create custom loadouts like this on the A6E that have 960 countermeasures and nothing else. In ground battles, as far as spawn points and gameplay are concerned, the Panther is considered a medium tank. But if you pay attention to the heavy tank targets in air realistic battles, you'll notice that they're actually Panthers, which is a more accurate representation of their armor class in a historical context. If you find yourself flying in a frozen tundra and suddenly experience engine failure, it's okay if you happen to be flying the Mersky too, as the plane has a small survival kit featuring some skis and an axe stashed in the rear compartment. A Finnish aviation museum is undergoing a restoration of the aircraft and you can see in one of their update blogs how this survival kit would have looked like in real life. There's a link in the description if you're interested. When you've run out of 80 GMs in the Charismatina, there's actually a few more hiding inside. When you send vehicles to holiday to remove them from the lineup, on every other nation apart from Israel, you're unable to send everything to holiday, but for some reason Israel allows you to have a completely empty lineup. Some planes have some pretty interesting ammunition belts. The G55 has this humongous box, and the MiG-19 has the longest magazine I've ever seen. I'm not sure how road legal some of the vehicles in War Thunder are, but at least a few of them, like the Lancia and CM-52, have license plates. A common problem many new War Thunder players find is that when they select a test drive for one of these vehicles, they suddenly find themselves in the jarring and horrendous experience of being inside France. <gasps> oh no, not again. On one of the Japanese aircraft carriers, the lunch menu was on display and pumpkin soup was ready to be served. However, at some point since I was made aware of this lunch menu, it's been removed and this low resolution image is all we've got. If anyone knows what happened to the pumpkin soup, I'd definitely like to know. In Air RB, some bridges are specially marked as bombable targets, but it doesn't actually matter if the bridge is marked as a target or not. You can bomb and destroy them either way. The crashed plane just above the A point on Arctic Polar Base is actually a destroyed plane from the cargo port. Both planes are from ESRG Cargo Airlines. I wonder if there's a story behind this. Holding the Alt key releases the mouse and you can use this to interact with the functionality at the bottom of your screen. And if you need a little bit more screen space, you can use this to dismiss the messages about active orders. And recording that little bit of video for that segment reminded me that you're able to activate blind hunt orders at the beginning of a match. And when it comes to Air RB, half the battle is your positioning. So if you want to screw over one guy in particular, this is a funny way of going about it. One of the biggest complaints when it comes to air realistic battles is the climbing into battle can take a bit too long and sometimes it feels a bit boring. However, with the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends, that's not going to be a problem anymore. You can fight this Hydra that's got multiple heads and each one has unique abilities. There's a head of mischief that's all about causing chaos. While that's going on, you've got the other heads like the Decay Head causing your team to be weakened. And if you log in between August 22nd and October 23rd, you can get your hands on Sun Wukong. And on top of that, you can expect to find a bunch of new champions in the game of mythical rarity. And they've got this brand new ability called Metamorph. So if you download the game with my link in the description now and put in the code JTSKIN, before October 7th, you'll get the epic champion Stag King as well as a skin that has been designed by John Tron himself. So scan my QR code right here and you'll get a free starter pack and all of this free in-game stuff. Clicking the link really helps me out, so I really appreciate it if you do. The P40E has one of the largest amount of unique camouflages that are completely unlockable in the game and even has an upside down camouflage. Next time you're on the Sun City map, 
take a look up or down depending on what kind of vehicle you're in and have a look at the tallest skyscraper. It seems to be based off a real hotel in Warsaw. It's one of the tallest five star hotels in the world. I couldn't find a reliable enough source but there's several claims that the strange cutout design of the building was done so to appease local residents who were worried that a new building of its size would block sunlight from reaching their properties. Which if true might explain why Gaijin put this building on a map called Sun City. On the new snow maps when you indiscriminately destroy nature you'll notice that the snow comes down the tree as it falls over. If you team kill too many friendly players, you're usually immediately kicked from the game. However, if these players were in your pre-made squad, then you can obliterate them as much as you want. All right, I'm dropping it. Here comes the sun. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you kill me with guns. Oh, okay. However, it seems this behavior doesn't apply when the thing you're team killing is a friendly drones. And even if they're in your squad, you'll get kicked after three destroyed. The Pibble M40 is unique compared to vehicles of a similar wheel design. It can take advantage of the driving controls to the rear of the vehicle being duplicated and the crew members in the back have full ability to drive the vehicle. Which means unlike most vehicles, if your primary driver is taken out, you're still able to make a quick getaway if needs be. When spectating a player in a replay, you can press the target's unit button and it will work just like it would in a normal match. The Warfare 2077 loading screen wasn't initially available as a reward during the event, so as far as I know, as it's only been available through Silver Lion loot crates, this loading screen is exceedingly rare. If you just got yourself a brand new joystick or HOTAS, if you go to controls and then this setup wizard, there's a bunch of presets already made to get you started. The central barrel on some British naval turrets is slightly shorter than the other barrels. If you're low on fuel and decide to turn off the engine on the Ariete, you'll notice that the air intake on the top of the fuselage closes up. On the Swedish air test flight map, you can land and rearm from an insane distance from the airfield. You can see the rear of the ITP's 37mm cannon from inside the cockpit. In order to prevent tail striking when taking off, the J-35 have small little extra wheels on the tailplane of the aircraft. If you open up the envelope in the bottom right corner of your screen, you can copy and paste your battle results and show off how few silver lines you earned from the last battle. If you get too many nukes and you need an extra challenge, you can add armoured target belts to the vehicle and increase the spawn cost to 3300 spawn points. If you started playing the game within the last few years, you might have imagined tank stabilizers have always been part of the game. But there was a point when they were a brand new feature. And I remember when they came out, my gargantuan brain thought it was going to be very important to bind the button to turn off your stabilizer. I can say without a doubt, in my tens of thousands of War Thunder matches, I've pressed the button exactly once, and that was to test it immediately after binding the button. If you look on the left side of the cockpit in the Typhoon, you get a readout of the exact position of the flaps. If you manage to run out of fuel in your scout drone, you'll find that it has an extremely good ability to glide, but since the scout drone spawns in with almost an hour of fuel and matches last around 20 minutes, without external commands, this will basically never happen. And of course you can go the other way, and give the scout drone a thousand kilograms of fuel and watch it fall out the sky. If your pilot has an accidental interaction with a 50 caliber bullet and he's flying the MI-24P, simply reach down to your lower right and you'll find that there's a first aid kit to patch you up. As the HKP-2 has no unlockable weaponry, it has one of the fewest amounts of modifications for a vehicle in the game. The M24 Chaffee in the research completion artwork is missing a 50 cal. And this dates back to as early as 2015, when the Chaffee simply didn't have a 50 cal. When you rip your wings, you'll get a message saying exceeded Mach number of whatever. But if you're flying a plane with a swing wing design, you can wobble your wings back and forward and you'll see how the position of the wings will dynamically affect the maximum speed you can go with the aircraft before ripping. Under the right conditions, it's possible for scout drones to emit contrails. The aircraft sitting on the runway on the low tier US test flight map are immune to bombs. 
However, if you fire machine guns at them, they'll explode all the same. On the cloth topped Panzer II, there's a small gap in the armour to allow the commander to pass shells through to the turret. The tow rope has a very short cooldown and it's considered a reload rate. I did some testing and it doesn't seem crew skills affect this. If you listen closely on swing wing planes, there's a small hydraulic sound effect when you move the position of the wings. On some of the lower tier tanks that have machine guns coming out the back of the turrets, there's a few unusable machine guns. But the strangest has to be on the Hargo, where it's impaled into the commander's back. If for some reason you decide you're far too stealthy, you can remove the camouflage netting from the Leopard 2 by uninstalling the modification. In real life, F3D pilots would have to bail out through a tunnel through the back of the plane. With the implementation of ejector seats, I hope this small detail is someday modelled into the game. A lot of the language inside the game when it comes to destroying enemy vehicles is things like crew knocked out and pilots unconscious. Since the game's rated 12 plus, I personally think that this is to protect the game from getting a higher rating. However, I don't think the people who did the rating saw what happens to the crew members in naval ships when they get hit by a shell. He's perfectly fine, don't worry about it. The star here next to the numbers on the radar means that there's other options available. For example here, the MiG-23M has other options for the field of view, but has a fixed radar range of 30 kilometers. If you're able to use the Sturmtiger for indirect fire, the other player gets to witness a very strange shell cam as it flies through multiple walls. On the spaceport ground map, the train track goes into a tunnel but it seems construction hasn't been completed. And, uh, where's the rest of the train track? This building here is called Jardine House, and with the release of update Wind of Change, you were able to find the building in War Thunder. However, if you look for the building today, you'll find the windows have been changed and the roof design is completely different. It's not clear why this was changed, but here you can see how the building originally looked on the dev server for the update. On the Normandy Ground Forces map, there's a detail near the Bravo capture point that I think's a little bit out of place for the game today, because it's literally Nazi propaganda. At first I thought it was a Russian general, but with some help from my Discord, link in the description if you want to join by the way, we managed to figure out that it was the front page of a 1933 edition. On the Golden Quarry map, the orange excavators are quite literally labelled shovel. If you fly the scout drone behind the IL-28 on the test drive map, you'll notice that the AI gunners attempt to shoot you down. Although, they don't do much of a good job. The bus stop on the spaceport map is called Los Extranjeros, which is Spanish for the foreigners. And if you didn't know already, the developers of War Thunder, Gaijin Entertainment is the Japanese word for the foreigners, so this bus station is basically a reference to themselves. Be careful when trying to rescue Flip's teammates, because dragging them into even a shallow piece of water can end up team killing them. You can get a bunch of debug information about your connection to the server by pressing Ctrl Shift N. I think RX and TX mean transmitter and receiver, but beyond that, I've not really got a clue what's going on here. There are several vehicles that have unique test drives based on their vehicle characteristics. The KA-29 is a helicopter that spawns on an aircraft carrier. The float planes like the BV-238 and the PBY have test drives where you spawn in the water. And the Swedish helicopter having floats also has a unique test drive. The V1 flying bombs that struck London during the Blitz in World War II were once actually present in War Thunder. Unfortunately, it seems to now have been removed, but back in 2014, there was a custom mission where you could recreate the iconic wing tipping of the V1 rocket. Thanks to a custom mission made by Gaming Flare 101, there is a way to fly the V1 rocket in War Thunder. I think it'd be interesting if the V1 returned to War Thunder as a spawnable unit for people without close air support, similar to how the strike drone works at higher battle ratings. If you're feeling peckish on the spaceport map, head down to Rocket Coffee, because if you're an astronaut, you'll get 25% off when you buy a Type 1A cheeseburger, and they seem to have a buy one get one free offer going on. If you prefer to fight in darkness, it's possible to destroy the flares that appear over the battle. If you've had enough of being spawn camped on Normandy, Follow the signs to the nearby town. The T114 is obviously a very unique tank, 
But have you noticed, in order for the auto loader to work, the barrel extends ever so slightly during reload, and it's quite a cool, unique animation. Looking closely on the Centurion Action X, you'll notice that there's a small oil spill at the exhaust of the vehicle. The fireboats on Malta are one of the easiest ways to get score, but if you leave them alone, they are actually programmed to attack the fleet, and they actually do pretty critical damage to the entire force. If you're able to reposition your aircraft using guns or any other method to move around the aircraft carrier, you're freely able to use any of the catapults on the aircraft carrier. In the tech tree, you can hover over the rank number to see how many more vehicles you need to unlock until you get access to the next rank. When you have a drop tank on your aircraft, you're able to somewhat control where the fuel is being consumed from by performing a negative G maneuver as the fuel suddenly starts coming out of a different fuel compartment. Sometimes on events and particularly wages, you only need a rank 3 vehicle in your lineup but can otherwise use rank 1 and 2 vehicles. This makes vehicles like the XF5F have some unique utility as the vehicle has an exceptionally low battle rating for a rank 3 vehicle. I'd like to nominate the Kai 10 1C as the Blaha of War Thunder Aviation as there's a pride flag on the icon for the ammunition. The Swedish test flight map is absolutely humongous and ironically is located in Denmark. If you lose your flaps on the BF-110, you can see the landing gear inside the little blobby compartment. Although War Thunder prides itself on its historical accuracy and representation of vehicles, it seems you can't switch sides and bomb your own base. In the cockpit of the A7K, you can find all the serial information of the aircraft and when it was built, and it actually corresponds to a real-life aircraft that flew in the 1980s. The new voice lines for the tank commanders in War Thunder is fantastic, it's just they're not quite smart enough to realise that a train is not a tank. You could decorate inside the crew compartment on the M163's turret, and it allows you to have some under-vehicle lighting. The sunflowers on the Vietnam ground map aren't all pointing in the same direction like sunflowers are supposed to. I mean, I'm no herbalist, but I mean, that's what Minecraft told me anyway. The attention to detail in the Italian Sea Harriers cockpit is accurate enough that the Tag Heuer logo is present on the clock face. On the left side of the cargo port map, there's a floating plane. If you're just hanging out in a custom battle, you can disable your AI gunners from shooting at enemies. One of my favourite camos on the Gaijin market is this Sherman testing skin. The fact you can become a bumblebee for just 20 cents is an absolute steal. The LAVAD is using some Michelin branded tyres. Meanwhile, the AMX 10RC seems to be using some sort of off brand because their tyres are labelled Michelin. War Thunder actually has a bunch of hidden chat commands. You can send a direct message to your friend using their first three letters of their username, and you can even make your own custom hidden chat rooms. This might be handy for those who host custom events like Hide and Seek as a way to get everyone invited in an efficient manner. In the options for helicopters, there's a separate option for a cinematic third-person camera. You might recognise this from one of Gaijin's earliest games, Apache Air Assault. And if you don't, you're going to want to click here to learn about the entire game history of every game Gaijin's ever developed. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe and your next 100 games of War Thunder will be blessed with good luck.